This is The White Stag by Kate Surety, Part 8, Chapter 4, Part 2. The cold, the cold stars trembled and the earth remained silent. But from above, from below the stars came a voice and at the sound of it, the crust of ice suddenly melted from the heart of old Bendigaz. A voice, sweet, soft, and so low that his ears did not hear it. He heard it with his heart. Lead me westward, white eagle of the moon, O oh, lead me on silvery rays of the moon, westward I long to fly. Westward, always westward. The wild mountains of Altain Ol Ola were but a legend to the Huns. The years by the misty blue lake, only a fading memory. The past lived in songs, the present in the flashing of swords, and the future in their hearts. The future was the land between two great rivers surrounded by mountains. Mountains, but they did not know what mountains were. Since the tribe had left the Blue Lake, their path had led through deserts, plains, prairies, flat or gently rolling land where their eagle eyes could sweep the blue horizon, where they could see the ponderous I, iron-clad armies, the enemy advancing slowly, where they always had the advantage over them, mounted as they were on the prairie-bred horses. And then, after half a century of warfare, when Attila, Attila was 25 years old, it seemed as if, at last, the great armies of Europe were exhausted. During the summer and fall of that year, the Huns found less and less opposition. They were in eastern Dacia by the late winter, having crossed the rivers Tyrus, Dinister, and Pytrus Pute at their lowest ebb. Westward, thundering westward now, like a wave lifting its crest, warriors more than than grains of sand or blades of grass on the plain. Under the hoofs of their horses, the white-covered frozen ground groaned and the, and the icy air echoed with their shouts westward with Attila. Like a wave lifting its crest to hurl against the rock and fall back, its great power shattered the myriads into sparkling atoms like the wave rushing blindly. They they did hurl themselves against a barrier. The great impassable sheer walls of the Caparitan Mountains. Before them stretched the mountains in tremendous arch. Cliff upon cliff, peak upon cleat, peak. Icy, formidable, without visible break anywhere. Behind them, closing in slowly, confidently, like the jaws of a steel trap, surely as its prey came the enemy. Day after day, Attila sent scouts to find a pass through across the mountains. The men went without a murmur into the icy wilderness, so strange to them were howling, where wolves howled and treacherous chasms waited for the unwary, and those who returned at all returned with the words, there is no way across. After listening to the deep rumble of the ground, watching the ring of campfires across the white plains, drawing closer and closer every night, Attila knew that there was no way back. The steel trap fashioned, fashioned with cunning and hate and the lust for revenge was cro closing in on them. It was more inexorable ex than the icy walls of the mountain. For days, the weather had been growing steadily colder. The sun was hiding behind the laden clouds, heavy with snow. The Huns had no more wood for fire. The rocky cliffs around them were barren of trees. People huddled together for a little warmth, silent, miserable, and puzzled. In the, in the gray dusk of the seventh day, 
Bendigaz and Attila were sitting alone in an icy tent. There was no need for words. There was no words to express what they felt. The impending doom of the people and their own helplessness tore at them with claws more vicious than the claws of a numbing cold. There was no hope in the heart of Attila. To him, the future seemed darker than the thickening, thickening night. Benigaz was watching his his son's face with grow, with a growing sense of apprehension. Those slanting a, amber colored eagle eyes were mere slits now, slits through which he could see despair changing into defiance and defiance into blazing fury. The sinewy hands of Attila were working, opening and clenching into terrible fists. And suddenly he was on his feet, his head thrown back in his face, a wretched semblance of a smile and a voice tr and a voice tragic parody of laughter. The red eagle, look at look at me now. Oh Attila snapped the voice of Bendigaz like the lash of a whip, and his old eyes blazing again with icy flame. Attila kill the snake of doubt in your soul, crush the worms of fear in your heart, and mountains will move out of your way, and your foes will become less then a handful of dust be before your sword. Attila, pray, but do not challenge. Be strong, son. Trust yourself and God in your heart. The tortured face of Attila relaxed. He laid his arm upon the shoulder of Bendigaz. Forgive me, father, he whispered. Your faith is greater than mine. Yes, my son, sighed Bendigaz, and his voice was heavy with memories. It is now. His steely gaze laid on the eyes of his son, and a great understanding silence fell upon them both. Outside, snow hissed against the tent, and the wind mounted, mounted mournfully. Attila lifted his head. Listen, father, listen to the wind. No, he cried, it's not the wind. People are calling my name. Listen, Attila, Attila, come, the cry of many voices, Attila. He tore the flint, the tent flap open, and the wind smote him with violence. Dark shapes of men were, were tumbling through the tearing flood of snow. Attila gasped the first to touch him. Look, for a moment he could see only the mad swirl of the snowflakes. Then he saw the luminous white against the white of the snow, standing still, a majestic statue, glowing with an unearthly light. The White Stag. The story is getting good. Attila whipped around and swept a bugle from the tent. To saddle, to saddle, blared the bugle above the howl of the gal. And others took up the call in the distance. Follow the stag, uh, cried Attila, leaping into the saddle. Follow the stag, e echoed the mountains. Follow the snag, stag, howled the wind. The white stag moved ahead of them, now slowly, now slowly, now swiftly, like a shimmering will-o'-wisp, always just within sight, but never letting them near, nearer, leading them safely over the trust treacherous icy impasses across deep drifts of snow. Attila and Bendigaz were were in the van behind them, the tremendous avalanche breaking a path wide and safe for the peak of horses and wagons to follow. No one whether the mirac no one knew whether the miraculous stag was leading where the miraculous stag was leading them, the white stag of the Hun legend, the stag of Hunar and Magyar. Perhaps it was their own faith they were following now as always, faith in the guiding hand of Hadar, the powerful god, faith soothes Faith smoothed a, the path under the trembling feet of the horses. Faith gave them, them strength to ride through the buffeting wind and whirl pools of stinging snow into the unknown. Gradually, the storm abated. 
ahead of them was still night. But in the east, the sky grew gray and wakening light, and then they saw that the stag had led them in a winding defile between towering peaks, a deep secret gorge eaten through the rocks by rivets. To the left and right were the overhanging cliffs leaning over the gorge curiously, the giants like giants leading down to watch a procession of ants. A faint green light hovered above the cliffs. Then the pale golden rays of the rising sun poured into the gorge. The pass widened, rocks and cliffs grew back and gave way to wooded slopes. Okay, we'll probably finish it up tomorrow. I'll give you a quick glimpse.